Um, what we saw that we need to have some coordination between people to avoid the tragedy of the commons. Okay? If we don't have coordinations, then it will need to uh, uh, the uh, um, uh, overuse of the resource. One usually one key issue uh, to be able to define the rules is the lack of sufficient data. For instance, in why countries around the world right now still were not able to uh, to uh, to define uh, uh, to find a solution to global warming? There are many reasons we can discuss about that, but one reason is that there are still uncertainties about what is what is the climate, the change in the climate, and if we do that, what may be the impact in terms of changing the climate? Okay. Um, on, I, I will I will list you some 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 problems in setting up uh, rules. One is uh, another one is the costly regulation. Of, of the behavior of users. Um, in India, you have one aquifer on water, and we have maybe 10,000 small scale farmers, each having his own pump uh, in the system. You could, you could um, put a water meter, you understand water meter, yeah? To measure the amount of the volume of water. You could put a water meter on each of these, each pumps and measure the amount of water that is pumped by each farmer. Yeah, you can do that. But imagine the cost of doing that with 10,000 farmers, and imagine the number of policemen or what you need to make sure that nobody cheats. It's possible, but it's very, very costly. Another difficulty that you have many stakeholders. Here my story, I told you about, uh, we were talking about 10 herders. Well, it's not that difficult to make a, a, a meeting with 10 people. But what about uh, global warming? Global warming, we, we are talking about almost 200 countries, usually different countries. Okay? Another key problem in finding, defining rules are what do you use as equity criteria to allocate resource rights? Okay? In my story, well, not that difficult. You will say, the rules would say every herder should just have. 10, 10 sheep and no more, okay? This is the, when the equity criteria here may be seen as very obvious. But when we talk about global warming, yeah? At one stage in the future, we will need to allocate quotas per country on about global warming. How much country is allowed in terms of emission of greenhouse gas? Will it be based on the number of inhabitants? Will it be based on the uh, gross national product? Will it be based on the, uh, the need in terms of development? Will it be based on the uh, uh, historical uh, emission of greenhouse gas effect? You have many, many possible equity criteria, and right now, one of right now still the, all these countries do not agree on which equity criteria they should use. If we say that the uh, uh, quota for greenhouse gas should be based on the number of inhabitants, then India will have three times more quota than the US. You can be sure that the US will not agree. I'm not saying that they're right or they're not or they're wrong, I'm not saying that. I just said that they won't agree. Okay? Uh, and yeah, and often we have so there is it's very very often very difficult to set up this this um, this route. It's not possible, but it is very difficult. Why? And uh, but still, we have usually very inadequate legal frameworks and resource to to. To, to organize coordination. All over the, in, in, in the, the, the domain I know more, which is groundwater resources, all over the world, the legal framework to deal with groundwater reuse is completely insufficient. Like uh, in, in all these North African countries, uh, uh, if I dig a borehole and I can make thousands of dollars 
with doing this borehole. And if I drill a borehole illegally, then I will be fined $100. I pay $100 because I know I will make much more benefit from that. Okay? And the public agencies in charge of doing all this coordination usually are completely understaffed on the resources to deal with these problems. So, basically these are the challenges. It is possible to set up management of natural resources to stop this story of, of, of the tragedy of the commons. We have examples around the world where it works. But we have many, many other examples where right now it is, it is not working. Deforestation occurs, global warming occurs, and we saw that groundwater overuse occurs in, in many places around the world. Okay, so just yeah, to, to finish with the, 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 yeah, about the Paris Agreement on, on, global, on global warming. So we are right now on global, in, this, in, this, in, in this process of setting up rules for uh, greenhouse gas emission. Uh, but right now we did not define quotas for each country. One of the reasons is that we, there is no agreement on the equity criteria. And right now there is a, you know that there is no penalty if a country does not meet its objective. Do you know what's inside this Paris Agreement? Do you know what is Paris Agreement? Paris Agreement? Yeah, it is about climate change, but what's inside? It is about global warming, <laughs> but what's inside? Uh, yeah, the Paris Agreement, they, okay, all the countries, decide, first they decided that global warming was taking place. So it's something. And second, all countries came up to this meeting saying that, okay, this is, this is my plan for the next 20 years to limit my emissions of greenhouse gas. China came with its plan, US came with its plan, France came with its plan, Thailand came with its plan. So all these countries came up with their own planning to limit their emissions. But all countries did it voluntarily, decided by itself its own objective. Some were very ambitious, other countries were much less ambitious. And right now, if we sum up the, all these plans, we still have much higher in terms of greenhouse gas compared to what scientists should say that should, should happen. Okay? So, first of all, we, we still not solve the problem of global warming. And second, if one country actually decides not to follow the plan, right now there is no penalty. So, right now we are in these negotiations. Things may improve the future, but also things may just not improve. So, some conclusions about all my talk. First, I hope you understood with my story of the herder that we have the same process in all situations of overuse of natural resources. Uh, the situation of Pareto optimum, and then if no rules is set up, if everything moves to a Nash equilibrium. Okay, this is the first point. The second point is that the common poor resources, you, you remember the definition, is not necessarily a resource where we have free access. It is possible to design rules, sometimes managed by the state, sometimes managed by users themselves. Okay, so. How we deal with that, it's still a very a key issue for the next coming years. Methods exist, and we need methods, and we need trained people also to, to facilitate all this process towards uh, sustainable management of natural resources. Okay? Any questions? Is it all like uh, the solutions? Is about them? Decentralization, um, some things like we, we mix up um, the local community work with the uh, state management. Something. Yeah, more and more uh, over the world, we the, the kind of uh, framework to manage the resource sustainability is not about having the state alone or having users alone. Usually, now the 
the solutions that are put forward are solutions where you have some kind of joint management by users themselves, but also by the state. And each does it, uh, each part does its own job. Yeah. Okay, but my own experience is okay, if you don't have any kind of, you would say, a silver bullet or blanket solution of standard solution that can be implemented in all over the world. That does not exist. What exists is, in each case, trying to build coalitions of actors from the state, from local communities, coalitions of actors able to set up these rules and to implement them. So the issue is how do you facilitate this coalition of actors? Other questions, remarks? Okay, if you put uh, on the internet uh, uh, these keywords of common pool resources, you will find many, many, uh, many papers on that. Uh, this book, uh, I have a, um, uh, it's a, it's a, it's still a very, very good book. I have a PDF version of this book. You can also find it on the internet. Um, um, actually, Australia eventually she got uh, a Nobel Prize in Economics from this book. So that. Uh, okay. No other questions? We still have uh, 10 minutes if we Okay, just, just as a... You have a lot of... of, of uh, of courses about climate change these days, yeah? Yeah? What do you know about climate change taking place in Asia? In your countries, what is it about climate change? What's happening? Okay. So, let more, it's, it's, it's colder. Okay. 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 And this is in Vietnam. Yeah. yeah? What else? In other countries, what do you know about climate change? Uh, in, the, in the past few years, like in the past few years, uh, there were flood and drought, especially drought. drought. Yeah. Okay. Where? In which countries? In Cambodia. In Cambodia. Yeah. Okay. Enough water for farming. Okay. Okay. Good. Good example. Uh, okay. I, I wanted to give a talk on climate change, <laughs> not the issue of the day, but I still want to give you some key ideas of climate change. Climate change. Um, uh, first of all, when do we know that we have climate change? We have climate change. We can say that we have climate change. If we have a change in statistical uh, description of the climate, usually over more than a period of 30 years. Okay? You can't say that because it's raining more than 10 years ago, or because the temperature is more than 10 years ago, there is a climate change. We need to put all this uh, in a longer, much longer uh, uh, period. Okay? So if, if you say that um, uh, there, have, there have been Big droughts in Thailand for in Cambodia uh, uh, last year. It may be because of climate change. It may be because of the usual climate variability. It may also be because Leo is building a lot of lot of new dams upstream and it has an impact on, on water availability. Okay. Anyway, we will you will talk more about climate change with uh, the next professor. So I, I won't I won't talk more about this issue. Okay, thanks for uh, listening.